I, I know there are people watching. I, I get emails from people who say I'm, I'm deconstructing, but I'm listening. I, I, I don't mm -hmm. want to do it for the wrong reasons. I, I want to believe what's true. What would be your advice for people who might be watching who are themselves going through a deconstruction process or might have a loved one or even a child going through that mm -hmm. kind of process? W what advice would you, would you give them? Mm -hmm. We approach this in a couple different ways. When I saw, I sat down to work on a, a, a lecture I was going to do one of my Biola classes and across like Twitter feed was, I don't know who John Steingard was. I had heard of Hawk Nelson and I was like, oh gosh, do I have time to write a response? This is going to take me a while. And I thought, you know what? This is, this is worth doing. Had never met him. I uh, hadn't heard of him individually, and I sat down, probably took me two or three hours, and I thought, I'm going to write as truthful but as grace-filled as possible. Maybe he'll read this, maybe, mm -hmm. with that in mind, because sometimes when we comment on social media, we act as if the person doesn't exist <laughs> that we're right. really talking to, yeah. and they do, and people hear stuff today, and it's shared with them, and people are watching and listening to the conversation. So I wrote pretty truthfully based on his post, but I also wrote grace filled and I looked at some of the comments on Instagram and it just broke my heart. I thought, are you kidding me? In his post, he mentions like depression, how painful this was for him and not a lot, but some Christians are piling on. And I thought this is not going to help anybody who already thinks Christians are this way. Mm -hmm. And he's certainly not going to reach out to Christians. It's going to push him the other way. So I just wrote truthful, as gracious as I could. It was Justin Brierley at Unbelievable who sent it to him and said, hey, would you be willing to come on with Sean? He wrote this post and he read that and was like, wow, that was thoughtful and really kind. That's what started the conversation. The last thing we need to do when somebody's deconstructing their faith is start criticizing them personally and going after them. Now, if somebody comes out with a really strong, aggressive post, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I might respond a little differently, but most posts are not that way. Most are people who feel like, you know, people are going to attack me personally. I'm making myself vulnerable. I don't want to lose friends. Like John said, he said, I feel like I'm on the outside. Like, let's just err on the side of leading with compassion and grace in this person's life. So when you see somebody questioning, just if there's only one thing you could communicate, I would communicate, say, you know what? I love you and I'm with you no matter what happens in your story. If you only communicate one thing, that's it. That's what my dad communicated to me. That's what I tried to communicate, not to John because I didn't know him, but to anybody listening to this, hey, there's thoughtful Christians who love and who care and aren't bailing on you. Yeah. So that's a little harder when it's family versus somebody else. I get that. I get those emails and calls all the time from people. Some Somehow people think, again, maybe it's because I have a little bit of a platform that somehow I can magically fix it right? <laughs> and that other people can't, which is so not true. Yeah. But if you can communicate anything to anybody who's questioning, it's I love you and I stand with you, period. Then when you're ready, let's start talking about the issues. So people who are deconstructing, I would say, I'm sorry if people have been really critical to you and have attacked you, like my heart just breaks. Um, my hope would be that you wouldn't allow those voices to crowd out the thoughtful, caring Christians who want to be a part of your life and your spiritual journey. Ignore those who are either not Christians or they're just in process and need some work themselves mm -hmm. and find those Christians in your life that you know care about you, aren't going to be judgmental, who are going to talk through these issues with you. Find them. And also, I'd say if you really want to find the answers, the answers are out there. Not certainty. Uh, this has come up a lot with my mm -hmm. conversation with people who used to believe, like, I'm just not certain anymore. Right. And I go, look. Certainty is not the standard, but if you want to know, we can have confidence that this is true and Christianity actually makes sense of the world. There's answers if you're willing to find it. So you are loved as best you can. Ignore those Christians who are just not living out the gospel. Uh, there's answers if you find them and then ask yourself the tough question. Do you really know what the gospel is? So if there's a Christian out there that's deconstructing, listen to this, I'd say read the gospel of John with as fresh eyes as you possibly can and just ask, 
who really is this person, Jesus? Mm -hmm.